Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome and thank you for joining our Ready for Recovery event this morning. We have a busy morning ahead of us and I would like to quickly run through the agenda so as we can get started. In a few moments, I'll introduce our chairman, Jonah Shocknessy, who will welcome everybody and set the scene. Then for both of our ministers, Minister Catherine Martin and Minister Diane Dodds will also address us. Niall Gibbons, our Chief Executive, will follow to outline Tourism Ireland's restart plans for overseas tourism in 2021. Then we will have a short break to give you time to have a cup of tea or coffee and check on your emails. After that, we will have our guest speaker, Simon Caldwell, the Senior Travel Editor of the Independent Newspaper in the UK. Simon will talk about what international travel might look like in 2021. He will be followed by a panel discussion with some international tourism industry leaders. We expect to be finished at around 12.30. If you want to ask a question, Niall, our Chief Executive, or the members of the panel, scroll down on your screen and you will see a box where you can enter a question. Our Twitter hashtag for today is hashtag ready for recovery. So, a busy morning ahead. Let's get started. To kick off our Ready for Recovery event this morning, I would like to introduce Jonah Shocknessy, Chairman of Tourism Ireland. Thank you very much, Shane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Shane has said, my name is Jonah Shocknessy. I'm Chair of Tourism Ireland, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you to our Ready for Recovery event this morning. I'm delighted that so many of you could join us online today, really delighted. This time last year, we were able to meet face to face. I was standing in front of you at the Intercontinental Hotel in Dublin, and then in the ICC in Belfast. We're all meeting remotely from now, but my hope is that we will be able to meet in person again very soon. I am particularly grateful to both of our ministers, Minister Diane Dodds and Minister Catherine Martin, for taking the time to record a special message for this event. And we will share this with you shortly. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank them both for all their support that they have shown during this very difficult year. But I'd also like to extend a very warm welcome to Paul Kelly and his team at Fulcher Ireland, to John McGuillan and his team in Northern Ireland, as well as all of our friends and colleagues at NITA, ITIC, the IHF, the NIHF and the ITOA, and indeed to all industry bodies and our tourism partners who are joining us online today. I don't need to tell you what an extremely challenging year this has been. We all know the impact of COVID-19 on our industry. It was immediate and far reaching. 2020 has been a year I'm sure many of you would like to forget. A year when our industry has faced the most difficult crisis ever. But I would like to assure you that I and the Board of Tourism Ireland have taken this matter extremely seriously. We have met regularly in 2020 and COVID has obviously been top of our agenda at every meeting. Since the beginning of the COVID crisis, North-South cooperation in tourism has been even more heightened. The three tourism agencies, Tourism Ireland, Tourism Northern Ireland and Fulch Ireland, have met fortnightly to discuss our respective responses to the crisis. Similarly, at an official level, there has been regular discussion and sharing of information between the Department of the Economy in Northern Ireland and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sports and Media in Ireland. Tourism Ireland has been fully engaged with the Tourism Recovery Task Force and the Aviation Recovery Task Force in Ireland and with the Tourism Recovery Steering Group in Northern Ireland. These work streams and their recommendations, along with government policy direction in both jurisdictions, will shape the future overseas tourism to the island of Ireland. While the survival stage of COVID has been longer than any of us could possibly have anticipated back in the spring, we are actively planning for recovery in anticipation of an improving situation in 2021 and beyond. Shortly, Niall Gibbons, our Chief Executive, will talk you through our plans to restart overseas tourism next year. In conclusion, I want to thank you for taking the time to join our Ready for Recovery event today. I hope you will find it very worthwhile. 
Of course, there are still many unknowns about our future, including, of course, the fact that the UK's transitional period for leaving the EU will come to an end on the 1st of January 2021, and the impact of Brexit on our sector is still unclear. However, I am confident that 2021 will be the year when people will return to international travel. I truly believe that tourism to the island of Ireland can and will recover from this pandemic. Recent news about vaccines is really positive and it does give us some hope. So while we certainly don't underestimate the challenges that may lie ahead, we look to 2021 with hope and a lot of optimism. I would like to assure you that everyone in Tourism Ireland is ready to roll out an extensive recovery kickstart programme once the island of Ireland is open again to international visitors. Continued cooperation with you, our industry partners, will be absolutely crucial, working together as we have in the past. We will face the challenges together. I look forward to the time when I can indeed meet you all face to face again, and hopefully that will, not, will be sooner rather than later. But I'd now like to hand you over to our ministers with responsibility for tourism, Minister Catherine Martin and Minister Diane Dodds. And firstly, Minister Catherine Martin, Minister for Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media. Thank you. Dee Galair, good morning everyone. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak at Tourism Ireland's virtual industry event. I would like to join with Joan and the Tourism Ireland team in thanking all of you for taking the time to participate today. In talking about the recovery of our industry, I know that Tourism Ireland, together with Fáilte Ireland and Tourism Northern Ireland, has a real ambition for sustainable recovery. Once Ireland is open again to overseas visitors, delivering a sustainable recovery for the long-term future of the Irish tourism will be essential. And while I know that unquestionably the short-term priority right now for everyone in our industry is to restore economic sustainability, I firmly believe that our success in attracting future international visitors will also be increasingly dependent on the demonstration of environmental and community sustainability. I would like to assure you that I and my department and the government are fully committed to tourism in terms of both development and marketing. We certainly recognise the extremely serious challenges facing all of you right now. I want to thank the members of the Tourism Recovery Task Force and all the people who made submissions to the task force. I recently established a recovery oversight group which will oversee the implementation of the recommendations in the task force report and will monitor the recovery in the sector generally from this COVID crisis. Finally, I would like to thank Joan, Niall and the Tourism Ireland team around the world in a very challenging year, they have continued to fly the flag for Ireland overseas and to keep Ireland visible and alive in the minds of our future international visitors. Every good wish to all of you joining today's event. I wish you every success for 2021 and beyond. Gaurav Mahagav, thank you. Thank you, Minister Martin, for those kind and supportive words. And can I take this opportunity to thank you and Minister Dodds and your officials for all of your support during 2020. We look forward to working closely with you again in 2021. So finally, I'd like to introduce Minister Diane Dodd, Northern Ireland's Minister for the Economy this morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to have this opportunity to address you at Tourism Ireland's virtual Ready for Recovery event. Thank you to Joan and Niall for inviting me. And it is great to know that so many of you are participating here today, showing, despite the incredible difficulties of the year gone by, how important this industry is for all of us. I don't need to tell you that COVID-19 has delivered a devastating blow for everyone working in tourism and hospitality this year. Our hotels, visitor attractions, bars and restaurants have been closed and we've seen the cancellation of events and conferences and sporting activities. Air access has also been a casualty. Here in Northern Ireland we have seen reductions in important air services and restoring those will be a priority for all of us in the coming years. 
I look forward to hearing more about Tourism Ireland's restart plans to begin the recovery and growth for our industry in 2021. I am confident that Tourism Ireland will respond to this very challenging environment with a programme of focused marketing initiatives designed to stimulate consumer interest and to deliver business for you, our tourism partners here in Northern Ireland and indeed across the island. In addition, I know that Tourism Ireland will also support you in your promotional activity to close the sale by investing in cooperative marketing and providing a range of promotional platforms for you in 2021. I want to assure you that my department and the Northern Ireland Executive are doing and will continue to do all that we can to support tourism. I want to thank the members of our Tourism Recovery Steering Group for all of their hard work. Their interim report is being assessed and we will move forward with that at the appropriate time. As Joan has already mentioned, we do look to 2021 with a certain degree of optimism and hope. Despite all the challenges as we head into 2021, I am mindful of the many positive factors working in our favour. Not least among them is the terrific product we have on offer here across Northern Ireland, including the new Game of Thrones studio tour at the Linen Mill Studios in Banbridge, a really exciting development which is due to open next summer. And as you know, we have a new destination brand for Northern Ireland, Embrace a Giant Spirit, which represents a wide range of our experiences and attractions. I know that this brand will help position us well for recovery and future growth in overseas tourism. I very much look forward to the time when I can get back on the road again and join Tourism Ireland and many of you at some of the overseas workshops and events and help to promote what I believe is a truly fantastic tourism destination. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you all very much for participating today and I wish you a successful marketing and a return to growth as soon as possible in the year ahead. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, you're very welcome to our Ready for Recovery Day. My name is Niall Gibbons, Chief Executive of Tourism Ireland. And uh, I'd like to start off by thanking both ministers, Catherine Martin and Minister Dodds, and their officials for their support uh, during the course of this very difficult year. Uh, our colleagues in Fulcher, Ireland, in Tourism Northern Ireland, uh, and particularly you, the industry, uh, who have lived through uh, certainly a, a very, very difficult period. There's probably no words to describe the decimation and devastation uh, that we felt during the course of 2020. When we stood here this time last year, uh, we were looking forward to a, a very prosperous year, uh, but certainly uh, once March came, it became very evident that we were into a very different situation. Uh, it's gone on longer than we thought, longer than we expected. Uh, one of the things, though, that we did do um, over the last nine months uh, was a level of collaboration uh, really was inspirational. And what we said to a lot of people back home was that we've got 21 markets around the globe. Uh, we've got one of the biggest global stages for Ireland and that the talent that we have at home uh, really came together in the form of our arts, culture, our creative space. Our tourism industry has given us so much material to put together to keep the lights on for Ireland abroad because the one thing we know for sure is that people are bursting to get out to travel again and it's important that we keep Ireland to the forefront of their minds. So we've put together this showreel which gives you a sense of what you uh, as an industry have put together for us really uh, in terms of what we've been able to showcase abroad and we'll show this to you now.
wonderful to be bringing such an amazing novel to life in the country where I'm from and in the landscapes which I love and know so well, both urban and rural. There's always a determination to uh, uh, shoot at least some of the movie there and to uh, particularly give a sense of the scale of Ireland, you know, and the beauty of Ireland, the, the coast, the landscape, the colour of that famous grass. So here we are again together online for the 18 Flavours of Ireland. I am your host, David Boyce, Head of Emerging Markets for Tourism Ireland. Hello everyone, my name is Alison Metcalf, Executive Vice President North America with Tourism Ireland. On behalf of my colleagues in the US and Canada, our industry suppliers from around the island of Ireland and US and Canadian tour operator partners, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our first ever virtual island expo. We came over from England on the ferry. We've had an amazing time. The Titanic Museum was amazing. It was brilliant. Had a great time. OMG! <laughs> we flew here, which felt really, really safe. It was only an hour's flight, so that was fine, no problems at all. And we're really enjoying the Giant's Causeway, and it is just an amazing place. We've taken far too many pictures. Look, tomorrow's Halloween, and look who these are. These are your friendly turnip carvings, which I have slain as I call them all week. Oh, I know. All week. You see, most people try and do the the uh, pumpkin thin now, but um, our friends at Tourism Ireland have been in touch and said to us, Eamon, you are absolutely right, because the whole tradition of carving uh, started in Ireland. So thank you, Tourism Ireland, for that. Ireland is the birthplace of Halloween, and three years ago, I had the opportunity to visit Ireland during this ancient festival and took in some of the amazing traditions that still live on to this day.
thank the gods for small mercies, tribulations overcome. You may have one idea of Ireland. But Ireland is so diverse and has so many different kinds of landscapes from rural to urban, uh, mountains, beautiful lush green fields, forests and cliffs. People come with one idea and they realise that we have the whole world on the island of Ireland. People know me as a dairy girl but in reality I'm a Galway girl. So I think Galway is great crack and I think it's an incredibly artistic city too. It's so colourful and so rich and Derry is such a friendly city. It's really vibrant, it's about the people there and it's such a wonderful place to go and to visit. It's quite mad to think now that there's a 30 foot mural featuring my face. <laughs> what I love most about holidays in Ireland is exploring the things that you've heard about. There is so much beauty to be found. Even exploring County Meath where I live, I think there is such Wonders. I will return into her arms, gently into the foam, to see her waters and her hills and all the beauty she beholds, to feel the earth beneath my feet, the warmth against my face, and be welcomed in at every turn into her kind embrace. But alas, for now, I'll have to wait to see my true love's form. But we all know that these green lands have weathered tougher storms. The wandering lanes and rugged cliffs, her fields laced with streams, will still be there after I awake. But for now, they're in my dreams. Now that's, now that's just, a, just a small piece of an awful lot of work that's gone on through the course of the year, uh, a year when there was exceptional collaboration between all of us in the tourism, arts, culture, creativity space and uh, it really got Ireland on the world stage and kept the lights on for all the right reasons. And today we're here to talk to you about our recovery framework. Our ministers back in April asked us to have a think about how should we frame this? What does the future look like uh, at a very uncertain time during the pandemic? I will really set out sort of three uh, areas to talk about. The first one, uh, it's about restarting. Um, and that's what we're in now. We're here to talk about restarts. The year is 2021 is the year for survival. It's about focusing on markets with the most immediate opportunities. And I'm going to talk about those a little later on. At some point, we'll move into a rebuild phase and have a greater focus on revenue. And ultimately, it's into redesign and focus on the sustainable development of a profitable long-term industry. Uh, so those were the three aspects of the recovery framework that we put in place and discussed with the authorities earlier on during the course of the pandemic. And there's policy frameworks uh, that are really central to recovery as well. The first of those was the Tourism Recovery Task Force uh, that was established uh, by the Minister earlier on during the course of the summer, chaired by Ruth Andrews. Uh, that's reported to government and an oversight group is in place now chaired by Noreen Hegarty of Lonely Planet. And the outputs of that will be key in forming policy for tourism in the years ahead. The Tourism Recovery Steering Group was established by Minister Diane Dodds in Northern Ireland. Uh, that's considering and deliberating on the final report. Uh, but a lot of the recommendations have already moved forward, uh, which is really encouraging. And the Aviation Recovery Task Force, Chris, chaired by Chris Horn, was established and reported to the government back in July. And those are three important policy inputs. And Tourism Ireland was represented on all three of those. And we're very close to the thinking uh, in both administrations. And also the collaboration with the industry was second to none. In relation to recovery, uh, from a Tourism Ireland perspective, there are probably three key pillars in relation to the recovery. Firstly, the consumer. What's the consumer thinking? Where will they go? What part of their interests have they changed? Uh, secondly, connectivity, particularly on the air side. About 20% of people, maybe 15, come by sea, but over 80% come by air. And we've seen that area decimated, and I'll talk about that later on. And then there's also supporting our industry and trade because I'm conscious that there's been huge cash burn during the course of 2020. We put a lot of free platforms in place over the last number of months. We're keen to do what we can to support our industry getting back out into the marketplace in 2021 when the time is right. But let me talk about the consumer first of all. We've embarked on one of the most 
intensive, biggest research programmes ever in the history of Tourism Ireland. We've had COVID research out in the marketplace since the middle of the year and will run until at least the middle of 2021. We've conducted already two uh, large-scale projects in our top 11 revenue markets, and we're also doing a monthly in-depth research in our top four markets in Great Britain, the United States, France and Germany. What is it telling us? Well, what is telling us that travel restrictions are a significant barrier? We know that as COVID cases rise, comfort in our consumers in travel declines. Vaccines and lower COVID rates will be the most influential factors for travel. What's encouraging is that summer 2021 is most commonly seen as the next holiday window. Good news in that Ireland and Northern Ireland are amongst the most comfortable destinations when compared against our competitors. What's interesting is that three groups, younger holidaymakers, what we call visiting friends and relatives, VFO, and repeat visitors are likely to be the first people to travel. And the good news as well is that holidaymakers are still planning and dreaming of a trip. And the findings from this research as it emerges over the next number of months will inform where we market, when, with what message, in what channel. And that's evolving all the time. But we've built up a really good bank of research over the last seven months. It's available on tourismireland.com, but those are the key highlights. In terms of the last number of months with that research in mind, what we have been engaged in is a big Fill Your Heart with Ireland campaign. And you've seen a lot of that in the course of the showreel. But the numbers are seriously impressive. For example, we've had over half a billion impressions on Facebook, 37 million video views, six and a half million engagements, and that's 39% more than last year, which was a record year for tourism. So people are out there, they're looking, they're engaging online, and we have a massive platform to showcase Ireland. If we were to buy the value of all that, which we collectively have put together, it would have cost us 166 million euros. So I just wanna say congratulations and well done to everybody involved for keeping Ireland at the forefront of the consumer's mind during a very, very difficult time. In terms of connectivity, there is absolutely no doubt about the connection between air connectivity and tourism. This is a chart which traces the history of aviation, so to speak, from 2005 uh, with an index of 100, and the tourism performance tracks it. And as you can see, between 2005 and 2008, there was good growth in tourism. The global financial crisis took hold and we saw some recovery in the period to 2015. But we saw really a golden age in tourism from 2015 to 2019, with the green line Europe, the red line Great Britain, and the blue line North America, showing very good growth. And that really follows the, the tourism chart as well. We've seen a dramatic fall during the course of the year. Uh, Dublin November and Belfast November figures both down 92%. It's a really, really tough story. But if tourism is to succeed, connectivity has to succeed. And that's the clear message. And that was the clear message that was delivered as part of the Aviation Recovery Task Force as well, which produced 12 recommendations that reported to the government. And also the Air and Sea Connectivity Task and Finish Group in Northern Ireland. We're very pleased to see the EU traffic light system in place. It gives a framework with which to build connectivity in 2021. And the UK travel corridors will have relevance for Northern Ireland. But these will only work if an improved test, track and trace, a comprehensive system is in place because safety is still paramount for the international consumer. But connectivity is absolutely key to our success. Now, there's still a lot of activity going on around the year end. I want to take you through what we're doing at the moment before we move into the conversation on 2021. Now, international publicity is a major part of our overall programme. We work very closely with Fulcher Ireland, with Tourism Northern Ireland in delivering this, and with you on the ground, our industry as well. And we've had some great successes over the last number of months. For example, the post-pandemic bucket list was on Canada. Uh, we had Matt Janelle on the Golf Channel on NBC, with whom we've got a long-standing relationship, and Colleen Kelly's family travel on PBS to very large numbers in the United States. We're conscious this year that influencers who would be a normal part of our publicity programme couldn't come to Ireland. So what we did was we found influencers in, Ireland, influencers in Ireland that we could team up with those people internationally and still manage to produce an awful lot of material, millions of views, as if they had made their visit here. So again, a very powerful part of the international publicity and influencer activity in keeping the lights on for Ireland over the last number of months. This month, we'll be reaching out to our diaspora. We'll have campaigns running in the United States, Great Britain and Canada. 
It's a very emotional time of the year for our diaspora, and this year a lot of them can't get home. We want to remind them that we can travel. Ireland is the place to come, and we want to see them coming home. And we're working on channels like Ancestry, like Irish Central in the United States, Ireland Family History, working with our close colleagues in the London Irish Centre, with uh, publications like Celtic Life, uh, a large campaign reaching out to the diaspora at the moment. Another piece of that, by the way, is what's known as Other Voices Home at the Guinness Storehouse. And if you have time this evening at eight o'clock, it's been broadcast on Tours of Ireland's channels around the globe. It's also broadcasting on RTE's online channels and YouTube. And really, this is a showcase of the best of young Irish musical talent. Everything from trad to hip hop, everything in between. And it's a great showcase for our diaspora as well at a time of the year when we all want to connect. And here's a 20 minute promo for what we've been putting out in our channels. It's getting picked up a lot around the globe. This December, Other Voices present their first ever Christmas concert, live from the Guinness Storehouse in the heart of Dublin, collapsing distance through the medium of words and music. Join us on the 16th of December. 16th of December. So just to repeat, um, we're delighted to be associated with that event this evening. We're broadcasting it on our channels and well done to the Other Voices team and the Guinness Storehouse House team. Another great example of collaboration and creativity. We have a big campaign going out at year-end. It'll launch next week in 11 markets around the world. And in our area showreel, you would have seen a lovely video at the end called I Will Return. And it was about the dream now, travel later phase that people's mindset was in back around April. Well, now it's about telling them that, you know, we are going to be on the radar next year. And the video is called Let's Get Back to Ireland. It's backed up by a big investment of 3 million in 11 markets. And it's inspirational at a very important time when people are thinking of where they're going next year and where they're going to book. Let's get back to Ireland. Back to doing the things that matter, the important stuff. Back to laughing with old friends and making new ones. Back to losing track of time and back to showing how it's done. Or maybe how it's not. So sit tight, because this time we're rolling out the green carpet. And when the time comes, a hundred thousand welcomes await. So a lovely piece there that will be going out to 11 of our top markets uh, over the coming weeks. That will run well into January. Uh, so Ireland will certainly be at the forefront of people's minds. Uh, and as we head into next year, um, I mean, this is about you know, being ready for recovery. Uh, there are an awful lot of things that we have been doing that will make sure that Tourism Ireland and our industry are ready to capitalise on tourism when the time is right. I want to talk about a number of those restarting initiatives now. First of all, over the last 18 months, we've been working on the redevelopment of Ireland.com. And this is a really important channel for us because in a normal tourism year, we would receive 23 million uh, visitors to this site. We have redeveloped completely the site and we will launch over the course of between now and the end of January, 33 market sites in 30 countries in 11 different languages. So obviously our big markets like the United States, Great Britain, France, Germany, but it'll also be as diverse as Arabic, Chinese, Japanese and South America as well. We'll also invest to double our consumer database to 1.4 million, which at the end of the day, between the personalization, between performance and being mobile enabled, I mean, Tourism Ireland will be at the cutting edge in terms of technology when tourism returns to this country. We will produce a new campaign in the first number of months of next year, ready for launch during St. Patrick's Week 2021, with the hope that international travel will restore during quarter two next year. The campaign is very simple. It's called the Green Button. It's now about capitalising on all the interest that we have built up over the course of many, many years, but especially over the last number of months with the great work that we've all been doing together. This is about immediacy now. This is about pushing the green button and booking your holiday to Ireland. And we still have a lot of work to do on the campaign, but the team are doing a great job. This is what it could look like uh, in, in various places around the world. Uh, but it also ties in very well with our St. Patrick's Day uh, launch of all our sites around the globe that will go green once again for the 11th year. Uh, here we have examples of the Sydney Opera House, London Eye, Burj Al Arab and the Colosseum that have gone green in the last number of years. We hope to have over 500 sites going green for St. Patrick's Day that really support and amplify our green button campaign. 
In addition to that, we're continuing to support our trade and industry through virtual trade platforms. We'll have 25 trade platforms over the next number of months in 10 different markets with opportunities for about 350 members of the industry at well-known places like ITB in Berlin, the PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando and others that are going online as well. A very important, important part, part of business, of business for, us. for us. I mentioned before the importance of broadcast opportunities and publicity. It would cost us about 350 million to buy all the things that we do collectively with the other tourist boards and the industry. But we already have, for example, in the can, Adrian Dunbar's Scenic Garland that's going to broadcast on Channel 5. We'll also be working with Donald Skeen's Travel Log, which will broadcast on PBS to very large numbers in the United States. The legendary Peter Greenberg, the travel editor of CBS, will do Hidden Ireland series on PBS in the States. And also, Moya Brennan will uh, help curate a Voices of Ireland four-episode series for Sky Arts as well. The Car Years on ITV, Golf's Greatest Hole and Sky Sports. We have over 60 major broadcast opportunities secured already for 2021. Again, uh, demonstrating a really strong return on investment. We will, in the first quarter of next year, hopefully run Embrace a Giant Spirit staycation campaign for Northern Ireland and Great Britain, renewing our partnership with The Guardian, working very closely with the carriers like EasyJet, Ryanair, Aer Lingus and all the others listed there and the airports in Northern Ireland to try and drive that traffic uh, to reboot and restart our tourism industry. We will also continue with our research programme. So what we started back in May in terms of our market research will continue into at least the middle of next year for our COVID tracker in our top 11 revenue markets. We will also embark into other areas. We'll conduct research into the luxury area, which we know is a market that's more likely to return quicker than the general tourism market. We'll carry out research into the overseas travel trade to identify any new opportunities that may emerge. And we know that activities like golf and other activities in general have become a much more important part of the tourism space and we'll conduct research to see if there are any other opportunities that are being missed in those spaces. So an awful lot of activity going on between the new campaign, the new website, publicity opportunities, the research programme. But look, at the end of the day, on the road to recovery, it could be a rocky one. We know that vaccines give us hope for the future. The COVID-19 situation has been very unstable and very unstable for our industry. Brexit was the biggest risk that we faced last year. It's fair to say that's been overshadowed by COVID. But let's remember the UK are leaving the European Union at the end of the month. We hope that a deal will get done. Uh, the, the good part of the equation is that the, the common travel area is still in place, so people from Britain can still come here, uh, which is very good. However, there are certain issues like currency relevant for the Republic of Ireland, so if sterling was to depreciate, it makes us more expensive. And there are other technical issues that need to be resolved as well around things like car insurance, pet passports, the European Health Insurance Card that are still not resolved as of yet. So hopefully a deal on the 31st of October, or sorry, December. Uh, we are keeping an eye very closely. We have a Brexit working group uh, on, on the space uh, and more information to follow. I mentioned connectivity being really important. So again, we need to get those planes back in the sky. We need to work with our carriers, with our airports to make sure that we have as much connectivity as we possibly can. And from a policy perspective, the task force inputs and the collaboration with industry will be key. Above all, next year is going to be about agility and flexibility because no one knows for certain. No one has got a crystal ball. What we can do here is map out a framework for how things might happen. Things could happen faster than we think. They might happen slower, but we will be ready to adapt our plan to the circumstances as we find them. So just to recap again, we're looking at a restart next year Fingers crossed for quarter two of 2021, but we will be out in the marketplace all through quarter one, reminding people of Ireland. We'll have our green button campaign, our new websites, publicity opportunities, working with the trade to restart on the markets with the most immediate opportunities. Our research is telling us that people want to travel to places they're familiar with. They want to go back to places they've been before and they want to go and see their visit, and friend, visit their friends and family. And the markets with the greatest potential are Great Britain and mainland Europe, but also North America. The rebuild phase will come probably 2022 and redesign is a more long-term thing, but this framework is going to be fluid as well. Next year, I can tell you, is a year of survival. One thing that's really amazed me during the course of 2020 is the scale and size of collaboration that we have all pulled together to support each other. Uh, another example of that is in the creative space with the Irish Film and Television Academy. Uh, they approached us and said, look, we've got some great talent. Uh, internationally, we've got this virtual stage. 
And it just shows you when you put the two things together, how our personalities abroad, Irish personalities, uh, can come back to help. So I'm going to leave you with this clip and I'll see you very shortly uh, at the, um, the panel conversation. But just again, to thank you very much for all the great work that you've done during the year. Uh, extremely difficult, brighter days ahead, uh, hope on the horizon with the vaccine. And I'm going to leave you now with words from Pierce Brosnan and Liam Cunningham. And we have other actors that will be following through on this during the course of 2021 as well. And thanks to the Irish Film and Television Academy for this piece. My favourite place in Ireland, well, it's got to be more than one. It's a big place. Well, it's a little place with a big heart. Two places, the kingdom, Kerry, is heaven on earth and, and beautiful West Cork. If they weren't on the planet, the place probably wouldn't be worth being in. I love the Kerry coastline. I love the ring of Kerry. My father, Tom Brosnan, was a Kerryman, so I try to go back there as often as I can. What I love about Ireland is, uh, it's a no-brainer. It's the people. The sheer stamina and life force of Irish people from this great, beautiful landscape. When I'm away, I miss, um, I miss, the, but bizarrely, I miss the rain. Is that weird? What I miss is the humour of the people. I left Ireland when I was a boy, I was 11. So, over these many decades now going back, there's always something to discover. 